We're back taking another look at lossless scaling. There has been some updates. People have been getting in contact asking me to see, has this improved in any way? And it seems as though it has. So let's take a look. For anyone who's not up to date, this software effectively allows you to add frame generation to anything really, but Star Citizen here. Now, when we looked at it first time around, it wasn't perfect. There were some garbling around the UI elements and that has been kind of addressed this latest update specifically targets UI improvement. So we'll see how that's doing, but also the software now is a lot easier to use. At the start, you had to lock your monitor refresh rate and you had to also lock your frame rate and then you could get it to work. But now it kind of would just work out the box. You can still lock your FPS. I think that's probably still recommended, but you don't have to. First of all, let's look at how the UI seems to have changed. So here's some footage from before when I first looked at this and the UI, as you kind of go around this area of Lawville at 30 FPS, is kind of moving all over the place. Here it is now side by side. On the left, you've got the lossless scaling frame generation. We're at 60 FPS. On the right, we've got the original 30 FPS footage. Uh, and you'll be able to see the difference between those two, but also just compare that to what you just saw. I would say the UI now does not move all over the place to the same extent. It's still not perfect, but it's it's better that footage was at 4k so maybe it could be the resolution that's helping but no i've gone and checked it at 1080p again and you'll see it definitely seems better than the previous footage i took when this was first released so it does seem as though whatever they're doing crazy ai magic who knows the ui elements are much more stable and the kind of flickering and garbled mess that it was before is still not perfect but I'd say it's much more usable. But when you increase from 30 FPS to a target of 60 FPS, even with the 7800 XD, you can't hit that all the way around Lawville, but it's pretty close most of the time. You'll see again, the garbling I think is even less now. We've got more information, more frames to take information for the, for the frame generation to do its magic. And just generally in my playing around with this, it's just a much, much better experience. And now this is probably, <laughs> not rocket size to anybody who follows this sort of technology. The more frames you can feed this sort of stuff, the better it will perform. And I really, 30 FPS is not <laughs> a recommended target. It's kind of the bare, bare minimum, but 60 works pretty well. And hard to show you exactly how this works in that YouTube video, it caps out at 60 FPS, but it is smoother. I mean, it, I think it's diminishing re returns above 60 FPS, different people's eyes, will see things differently, but 120 definitely feels smoother than 60 in my opinion. And because you're obviously at a fairly decent base frame rate anyway, 60 FPS, the input latency isn't as noticeable. So the last time I tested this, when you're at 30 upscaling to 60, the game still feels like 30 FPS, but doesn't look quite like it. Whereas when you're at 60 FPS going to 120, I think it feels much more, uh, close to what you see, if that makes sense. There's not so much of a disconnect. I wouldn't necessarily say that you would probably want to go into Arena Commander in Star Citizen or a high FPS shooter game mode where you want to be as kind of precise as possible. I think the input lag there will still, you'll still feel it compared to 120 FPS native. But as I played around this, I'll show you some footage of just when I was flying around a bit and coming back to Lawville. It feels pretty decent and it looks pretty good. And so what I would say is probably similar to what I said the first time. Some of you might already have this technology because it allows you to, it allowed us to do upscaling when there wasn't really an option to do that within Nvidia or AMD's own software a while back. But if you've already got it, or even if you haven't got it, it's not that expensive on Steam. If you've got a high refresh rate monitor and high end hardware, it's now working pretty well. I think it'll be a while before we get actual frame generation natively in Star Citizen. Maybe when Squadron 42 comes out, maybe then around that period of time, they'll want to get these last kind of pieces of software in that most people expect from AAA game launches. But for now, I mean, I'm at 4K here, doubling my frame rate, and it feels pretty good. <laughs> 